Welcome back, everyone. It's 1242, and you're watching CT Style. As our Mommy Monday features continue, it's important for moms and dads to know just how important playtime is for toddlers and what type of play is recommended for learning. Director of Specialized Training and Family and Children's Aid uh, joins us here, Dana Hillman. Also, we should mention a mom of twins under three. So you're doing this firsthand. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> First off, give us the mission of Family and Children's Aid. You've been there a long time. I have. I've been there for about nine years. We've been around for over 200 years. Wow. Um, and so we have innovative and creative ways of working with children and their families um, to promote behavioral health um, and help with their mental health through mm -hmm. groups, individual therapy, in-home programs, foster care programs, and more. Sure. Uh, so toddlers are, are playing, but that's how they're learning. We think it's just playtime, but is there a way to kind of foster this and really get the benefits for the child? Absolutely. Um, so Play-Doh says we can learn more about someone and discover more about them in an hour of play versus mm -hmm. Is uh, a year of conversation. Really? And so for children, play is their language. That's mm -hmm. how they communicate with us. Um, but we lose that as adults. We forget how to play and how to be silly. Right. And our kids try to remind us that. And sometimes we're not always receptive to it or hearing it. Um, but it, help, it promotes healthy brain development in children. Kids who are playing have that enriched dendrite development. Sure. So ideally, we're supposed to let them lead the way. That's correct. Yes. We want children to tell us what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, structured activities are very important. I, my kids are involved in a lot of structured activities, um, but it's so important we still make time for that unstructured natural playtime mm -hmm. and having that connection with your child when you're doing it because we're hardwired for connection, sure. so we don't want to play alone. We need to have someone to play with, and who better than your parents? Right. And your little guy was moving chairs around the other day, and you <laughs> yeah. know the obviously the obvious thought is he's going to get hurt. We got to yeah. stop this. Yeah, he's really into moving the chairs around the kitchen, and um, my instinct is this is unsafe. We right. need to get down. And he had lined the chairs up and recruited his twin sister to <laughs> sit on the chairs with him. And it turns out he was just creating a choo-choo train, which oh. he loves. <laughs> um, and it just shows how natural. Naturally, as a parent, we lose that ability to kind of see where they're going with it. We're in initially going, oh my gosh, someone's going to get hurt. Right. I mean, I'm a big with that when, when my son Dante is coloring. It's like, why are we doing the frog blue? The frog is supposed right. to be green. Absolutely. Maybe let it be blue, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we want children to be able to express their language and show that it is accepted by you. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they can lead us in their play and we can join them, we're really helping fostering a really nurturing connection between a parent and a child. It makes sense. So what did you bring here? What are some good toys to be playing with? Okay, so this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, my children Children love this. I had to like pry it out of their hands <laughs> to come here. Um, but what I love about this is that with blocks, if you tend to be a little OCD as a parent like mm -hmm. I am, um, even with blocks, you could be like, nope, that. It's not lining up properly, or that's the way to do that. Um, but with these, I mean, there's really no wrong way to do They're it. They're gonna stick, yeah. They're just gonna stick. And they, my daughter made a princess out of it this morning. Did oh. it look like a princess? To her, it did. To her, right? it did. And that's what's important. Yeah. And the hard part was when she asked me to recreate that. Um, <laughs> to my son, this is a flashlight. Um, ah. And then he puts his flashlight on something that he calls a helicopter or the bridge that he makes out of this. Mm -hmm. um, will these keep them occupied while I do the dishes? Absolutely, and that's certainly helpful and necessary. Sure. Um, but the best time is like last night, we all sat playing these on the floor and just listening to my children's imagination and letting them kind of lead where, where they we're come going up with, with some of these yeah, ideas. It's absolutely. incredible, right? And, absolutely. And obviously, reading to your little one is so important. Yeah, and we try, so my children really struggle sitting still for reading, so we try to find books that we can. Um, put a little movement into it so like I'll do I love you through and through mm -hmm. um, and you know it says like from your mad side to your silly side so we'll act out when we get to mad side what does mad look like ah, what is silly it's important yeah absolutely identifying emotions is crucial my daughter told me the other day she went upstairs very angry um, and she came back downstairs totally fine and said I was just angry, Mom. I got over it, Mom. <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that's good. You're that's identifying great. your emotions. Sure. Dana, where can we find some more information? Um, so our website mm -hmm. is www.fcaweb.org. Okay. Um, we have family groups, um, play nights for families. Um, I'm also really very much into this particular author. The Whole Brain Child talks about when you're engaging with your child using sure. their whole brain. We'll check it out. Yeah. 